Hey everyone, it's the Tyrant here and welcome back to the channel. Uh, I just wanted to sort of post a little bit of a follow-up video regarding the video I posted last week uh, in terms of the Scorpion gun, aka tank gun, being removed from Halo Infinite. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with what's going on, uh, essentially Unishek from 343 last week tweeted that the Scorpion gun or tank gun was going to be quote-unquote fixed in Season 2 for Halo Infinite. And based off of that and some of the replies he gave for people who tweeted back at him, it sounds like that's going to mean removal of the Scorpion gun. That's not guaranteed, but it is heavily implied. Uh, just to give you sort of a little bit of a recap of the video itself, obviously I disapprove of that because it is, you know, according to them at least, according to 343, it is a glitch that is was accidentally left in game. Uh, they did not intend for the Scorpion gun, gun to be there, but it was. And uh, historically speaking, campaign-only glitches uh, that have not hurt the player have never been patched, all the way, dating all the way back to Halo Combat Evolved. So we're going to sort of go from that uh, forward. Uh, again, I do apologize if I stutter a little bit or ramble or pause. This is off the cuff. There is no script here, so I'm just sort of going forward. The goal of this video is sort of to uh, not just follow up on that, but to sort of address some of the comments that I saw. And to that, I also want to thank everyone who's watched the video. Uh, I received an overwhelmingly positive response Overall, uh, nearly 20,000 people have watched it uh, to date currently, and over 80% of people who left likes versus dislikes uh, liked it. So, thank you. Uh, so, obviously, it, it does resonate, and I wanted to share that because uh, I do want to get this message out there, and I do hope that 343, if they are removing the tank gun, does reconsider their decision. Uh, and I'll go and I'll sort of recap a little bit why, but I'm not going to go into the amount of detail that I went into in the other video. This is again more of a follow up. So, uh, just again to sort of recap a little bit, I don't approve of the removal of the Scorpion gun uh, because it is a campaign only glitch that does not hurt the player. It is optional for people to pick up if they want to use it. And. As far as I know, it does not break the game in any sort of way in terms of playability. Uh, it, 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 it's not going to cause the game to shut down or crash or anything like that. And in terms of playability, that's all I care about. If it alters the way that you play, I'm fine with that. Glitches have existed, as I said in my previous video, since Combat Evolved. Uh, one thing that I didn't touch on uh, in my last video, which I've, I've, it, it didn't occur to me till after I posted it, uh, but, you know, I've been doing Mythic Laser Walkthroughs, Legendary All Skulls On, since 2008. And the first glitch that I completely abused in Halo 3, because that was my first uh, Mythic Laser Walkthrough, was the Plasma, pl plasma Pistol glitch. Uh, for those of you who are old fossils like me who remember it, fantastic. For those of you who are relatively new to the franchise or may have not seen those videos... Uh, essentially that glitch, and again, I relentlessly abused it in my 1.0 guide for Halo 3 Mythic. Uh, essentially, if you take a plasma pistol in Halo 3, and as far as I know, it still works in MCC too, so you can use it there, uh, and you use an overcharge shot against a shielded enemy, well, really any enemy, but it's only actually effective against a shielded enemy, from a far enough distance... Uh, even though it's too far for the plasma overcharge to track, as long as you have decent aim, uh, it'll actually, you know, hit the enemy. And by that I mean the enemy will not register that there's a projectile coming its way. And this is a very effective way to take out uh, power armored brutes from a distance. And it's it's phenomenal it'll get you it'll get you the game very easily especially if you're playing on mythic you have to worry about the tough luck skull which makes enemies dodge a lot more and so if you try to do it from close enough range that they can see it then you know you probably won't hit them at least on the first shot and with famine activated and having far less ammo than you usually do that further complicates things so you know again I've been using glitches personally since way back then. 
granted, I'm sure I used a few before I started creating walkthroughs during Halo Combat Evolved and Halo 2, but at the same time, this was the first like official one that I released to the public. So, and it was founded by another member of the uh, Mythic community who was talking with me when I was in the midst of actually trying to create this uh, walkthrough. And, uh, and I gave him credit, of course, but so glitches have been a thing since Halo Combat Evolved and they've never been removed as long as it's campaign only and it does not hurt the player. So this is a new precedent, and that's one of the main reasons why I'm so upset about it. I need to take a step back here for a second and uh, address one of the comments that I saw in uh, the video. And this is, it's one of the main ones that I see. And I partially do side with it. And so I want to throw my support out, out to you in that way. And one of them is, you're tired of hearing people complain about Halo Infinite. I'm with you on that. Trust me. Uh, so I'm going to post my review to the game uh, in a pinned comment below so that you can see it. And I still stand by those comments. I've been largely supportive of Halo Infinite. You know, and I did point out its flaws in my review, and I still stand by those as well. I still feel like that uh, ever since... Uh, it, I don't want to target 343 exactly on this. I mean, you can if you want to. Your feelings on them are all yours. Uh, but I feel like in terms of pinnacle content, on launch day, Halo Reach was it. Um, you know, it's still not my favorite Halo game. I have a Halo rankings list on this channel as well. But in terms of content that was available on launch day... Halo Reach still to this day remains top dog in that category. And that was, well, as of Halo Infinite's release date, 11 years prior, which is kind of sad when you think about it. Uh, you would think there'd be a lot more at this point. Uh, from Halo 4 onwards, it seems like we've see received less and less content at launch. And so that has been one of my main criticisms. It was one of my sticking points from my Halo 5 review is how little we had available at launch even though i loved warzone still there wasn't much there and halo infinite didn't change that now i will say that i'm still a fan of the campaign uh story is fine it's still better than halo 5 in my opinion um i still prefer halo 4 story more but uh, i don't really care about if you know me you know i don't really care about story when it comes to video games it's a nice bonus but i care about gameplay more uh, so halo infinite in in my opinion has a great campaign overall so i'm going to start with that uh in terms of the multiplayer I, I, and, and there i know there are a lot of you out there who prefer multiplayer i know people who still haven't touched the campaign yet because multiplayer is all they do so i know there are folks out there who love multiplayer they love customization forge and for you i understand that halo infinite is not up to par i can't speak from that perspective because that is not my bread and butter campaign is so for me at least halo infinite did deliver on that overall and the other aspects, not so much. So I do understand your frustration there, uh, but I still do hold Halo Infinite in high regard. Now, having said that, removal of the Scorpion gun, just to reiterate, is a very poor move by 343 Industries, primarily because I see it as being regressive. And the main reason for that is, you know, any arc... Uh, well, let me, let me back up a little bit. My main touching point, and the one that I will continue to argue with, or argue for, is that Halo Infinite laid a very solid foundation for its own game. Uh, 343 said it was on a 10-year plan. I don't know if they're going to stick by that or not, but if they do, uh, it did lay a great foundation for it, and they can build upon that foundation to create something amazing. Uh, they started really terribly with Halo 5, but... By, you know, the end game, I felt like it was a very solid title. Again, story-wise, not so much. 
Gameplay, yes. You can argue enhanced mobility, all that stuff. That's a completely separate conversation because it depends on what you personally like. But they did add a lot of content as time went on. And I feel like Halo Infinite can do that as well. And so I stand by the the uh, perspective that Halo Infinite did lay a very solid foundation. But as any architecture and any construction worker will tell you, you need to build upon the foundation and not chip away from it. And that is what they're doing with trying to remove the Scorpion gun. Again, the Scorpion gun does not harm the player in any way. It is optional to pick up, so you don't need to if you don't have to. So that is my biggest gripe about it. Again, going back to the folks that uh, don't like hearing people complain, I'm with you on that. I get tired of, you know, you know, seeing Twitter posts every day about people constantly badgering 343 Industries about, you know, how much the game sucks and how it should have this, that, and the other. I'm not arguing that you're wrong and that the game should have those things, but, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time, but I keep hearing it over and over again. The reason why this stands out for me is because, first of all, as I mentioned earlier, they've never patched a quote-unquote glitch in a campaign-only uh, you know, feature before. They just left it in. They always have. And so this sets a new precedence. And this could you know, make previous walkthroughs completely obsolete. I mean, if they're going to do it with Halo Infinite, what's stopping them from doing it with MCC or any of the prior, uh, previous Halo titles? So, that's upsetting. And so that's why this, this particular uh, issue struck a chord with me. It's not that I don't support Halo Infinite, it's that I don't support this decision. And I hope that uh, they'll hear this and reconsider. The other topic that I sort of wanted to comment on, based on the comments that I received in the previous video, is some people believe that the Scorpion gun is either being removed or should be removed because, and I'm wondering if it was most one person posting on multiple accounts or literally just people mirroring off of each other and uh, uh, within the same bubble. They said it makes the game to... Uh, what was the word they used? Starts with a T. Trivial. Yes. Uh, trivial. And too easy. Uh, I disagree with that for a number of reasons. Uh, the first is glitches, yes, generally do make the game easier. Speedrunners have taken advantage of them for gosh knows how long. I said in my last video, I think a world record for Halo uh, Combat Evolved on Legendary is within an hour or so uh, and people take advantage of all the time clipping through walls uh, despawns that sort of thing uh, in my in halo combat evolved alone you can despawn most of the enemies on assault of the control room to get to the final point in the game you can also uh, uh, clip through a wall in the mission keys to skip 90 five percent of the mission if not more than that so you basically cheese 20 percent of the game already uh now let's fast forward to halo infinite now you say it trivializes the game and it makes it too easy 343 has already done that both intentionally and unintentionally with things that they're not bothering to touch the biggest one that i want to touch on right now is bandana so, this is the first mainstream Halo title to include the Bandana Skull. Prior mainstream Halo titles haven't. Uh, ever since Halo 3, uh, with the exception of them admitting, I think, maybe the uh, Fog Skull in ODST. I think that was the one they admitted. Um, all the skulls have been very consistent. You know, they've had the same skulls throughout all the games since Halo 3. This is the first time they sort of changed up that formula, and they added Bandana. They have had Bandana in both Halo Anniversary and Halo 2 Anniversary, but in none of the other titles. And for those of you who don't know, I'm sure most of you watching do, Bandana gives you infinite ammo for everything and infinite grenades. But there are also four grenade types in Halo Infinite, 
and one of those grenade types is the dynamo grenade aka shock grenade and it not only stuns enemies but it does damage them at the same time and you can just chuck them over and over again and have zero opposition um, in addition to that you get all grenade types at the beginning of the mission you don't have to pick up the grenade type first as long as you have bandana you have all grenade types available to you and an infinite amount of them you of course can also utilize bandana for infinite rockets infinite sword infinite skewer infinite uh, what's that stalker rifle uh gravity hammer whatever you want that's the thing they already trivialized the game just by adding that in Lazo alone is even in a worse state uh, just from the community perspective in terms of people who actually like a traditional Lazo and Mythic because, first of all, they didn't just add Bandana. They removed one of the core skulls that makes Lazo slash Mythic difficult to begin with, and that's the Iron Skull, the one that gets rid of checkpoints. So that you have to do it all in one go you actually have to take care of the strategies that you utilize and be careful about how you approach situations you can't just go in over and over again that was the core difficulty of the of the setting for me was iron and the funny thing is halo 5 was the first game to actually get iron right for all the games prior to that you could use the save and quick glitch and i guarantee you the vast majority of people who beat lazo with the exception of my mythic community, definitely abuse the hell out of save and quit. Definitely. Halo 5 was the first game where you couldn't do that. You actually had to do it the right way. And it's so sad for me, as someone who's been doing this for so long now, uh, to see that skull removed. So that was one of them. Tilt was another skull that was removed. The one that basically rebalances damage modifiers. That was also removed. Don't know why, but it was. Um, and of course, just to add to the bandana situation, uh, if you're playing on Lazo, bandana completely nullifies, nullifies uh, the famine skull, uh, which is the skull that reduces the amount of ammo that you get when you pick up weapons that are on the ground. So that's three skulls from previous Halo titles that are completely obsolete right there because of 343's design and the inclusion of bandana so that alone trivializes the game don't blame scorpion gun on that the second major glitch that does is the one that allows you to essentially skip two-thirds of the campaign they're not removing that at least there's no word on that they haven't mentioned that they're going to but you can do it there are speed runs out there right now with uh you know one of the most famous guys who does it is mint blitz i'm sure you've seen him on Twitter and YouTube, and you know he's done the campaign in roughly 30 minutes, essentially by utilizing that glitch. You think Scorpion Gun trivializes the game, but they're leaving Bandana and that glitch in? No, no, that no, that that is complete BS. So, once again, to sort of dial things back a little bit, for. For those of you who think it trivially, tri for those of you who think it makes the campaign too easy for you, again, it's an optional thing. You don't have to pick it up. Honestly, I stumbled across the fact that the Scorpion Gun even existed by accident. Um, you know, I saw people mention it, and I had no idea what it was because it wasn't listed in the weapons that were, uh, you know, in the roster. And so I was like, what the heck's the Scorpion Gun? And then I saw it and I was like, Oh, well, that's cool. Uh, and, you know, when I did a poll on my channel on whether or not my 1.0 guide for my legendary walkthrough should include it, uh, hundreds of people voted and 81% said yes. And so I was like, okay, people clearly want this. And now because they're planning on removing it, supposedly, my legendary guide is going to be obsolete within days of it being finished and i feel like that hurts the people who actually want to utilize it now you know just for the record uh, i do realize that there were people who were sort of mixed on it 
And so I've been trying to keep it as sort of a back pocket weapon for my legendary guy, like not spamming it or using it exclusively, just in certain scenarios, uh, particularly against those Berserker Brutes. I hate them. They're the most annoying enemies in the game. They just, they make me, Ugh! I don't like them at all. Um, and I have been using them for boss fights as well. I know there are plenty of ways to defeat the bosses. It's just sort of the easiest way to do it. And since, you know, it was a, an available method and it made it easier, I didn't see why not. But, uh, again, for my legendary walkthrough, I have been using it as a very back pocket weapon and using other weapons as my main source of actually, you know, taking out enemies. But still, it, there's no reason for this to be the case. So, again, just wanted to post a little follow-up video, just addressing some of the things on the comment section. Uh, I hope this does clarify things a little bit more with you guys. Again, this this is not hate towards 343. This is not hate towards Unishek or anything like that. I just think it's a very poor decision move. When, as I mentioned in my previous video, there are so many other issues that need to be addressed first, especially with campaign. It just feels very odd that they would pick this very specific thing to focus on rather than some of the more important items. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Uh, hopefully, if you're going to comment, you've seen both videos at this point. Uh, I will post a link to the previous video in the description. So you'll have the link to that video in the description as well as the link to my review in a pinned comment below. So you have all the tools that you need uh, to get sort of a full round of perspective. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it informative. And if you did, um, I hope you consider liking and subscribing. Um, I hope you consider sharing this so that 343 gets the message across. And I want to take a moment to thank you all uh, for taking the time out of your busy day to sit down and watch this video. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you consider subscribing for more great content right here on the channel. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful week. I'll catch you all right back here next time. And as always, I'm the Tyrant, signing off.